What it do, y'all? This your boy King Eric, the media assassin, coming at y'all with another video. Subscribe at the like button for me. So I want to talk about this mixtape here, Build and Destroy by Royce the Five Nine. And for those who don't know, people are fooled by how Royce the Five Nine be always defending Eminem. Like it seems as though every time Eminem gets in the back and forth. Royce is there. Royce is defending him. Royce is going on platforms defending him. Well, I'm thinking what has happened is Royce seen how much of that bag that he missed out on during that time period when he was beefing with Eminem. Because during the time when Eminem was transitioning into a megastar, Royce had already fell out with him. And a lot of it could be due to misunderstandings. Like there's one incident where I remember hearing about this, where Eminem said that he was going to sign with Roy, sign Royce to Shady Records. M told him that there's no more room at the moment. I'll get at you another time. And then come to find out he signs 50 Cent. And that made Royce feel a sort of way. That's number one. Number two, he was focusing more on D12. Because according to what Bazaar said on the beef joint, Royce didn't want to do the whole, uh, whatchamacall, supporting cast role no more. He didn't want to be the hype man. He couldn't go on tour and finish the hype, man, so he wanted to go ahead and finish his album. So, M was left without a hype, man, and that's where he got proof. That could be number two. Now, knowing that, there's already friction involved. There's already friction involved, so Royce goes ahead and does a, a freestyle. He does a freestyle for the anger management mixtape. He submits the freestyle and he goes, fuck anger management, I don't need nobody to manage my anger and they took it as a diss. Now, I don't think that was a diss at all. I think what it was with Royce, he does what D12 was doing, playing with themselves. Not like that, but dissing themselves, satire. It was nothing really malicious. It was to pretty much be like, okay, they clown themselves because they do that themselves in their records. But knowing the friction already involved, knowing the tension involved due to Royce's management, making things a little bit uncomfortable with Dr. Dre, what he said on the vibe, that situation came out different. So now... He ain't really fucking with Royce no more. Took his freestyle off. And now it's a full-fledged beef. This record start coming out. Between D12 and Royce. And Royce goes ahead and he drops. Build and Destroy. The concept of Build and Destroy. The build side is Royce's best work. Like his early work. You get all the collaborations he did with Eminem up there, scary movies, the joint he did with Premiere, Freestyles, all the good stuff. You know, when he's talking with the concept of build, he mean he built and helped build, him and Eminem helped build a brand. Destroy is where he goes, um, I am a Hager. You know what I'm saying? Build it, destroy it is where every song, kind of like this is where Game got his 300 balls and running, and his mixtape this is from. This mixtape here was what originated a lot of this, I believe. I never heard where one artist, well, you could say even 50 Cent probably did it. Well, it's hard to really say. It's hard to really say who really originated that concept. A lot of people will probably first say Tupac. 
with the Machiavelli joint where he diss people on every track. So, whoever originated the concept, that's relevant to this topic. But nevertheless, Royce went at them niggas at every song. Every song. Using their beats. Especially the in the club joint. I don't even know if you can find that online. Because you know Interscope, they probably put a freeze on that shit. So... The Malcolm X joint was the one that was the best diss of them all. He dissed them over the How We Do video. I mean, How We Do joint. He dissed them on... Man, it was heavy. It was him and his brother. And they went hard. That was one of the hardest mixtapes I've heard. And that really introduced me to Royce the Five Nine. Like, I've heard of him. But this right here made me shut, made me realize how nice he really is. So, with that being done, him and M ain't really worked together in almost 10 years prior to about 2010, 2011. And a lot has changed since then. M had went through his drug problems where he almost died. Proof had gotten killed. So, they buried the hatchet. And the, and, the, and the brotherhood seems to be more stronger than ever, especially with the way Royce is willing to take a bullet because he missed out on a lot of revenue. He ain't trying to let that go again. Especially around that time where that Eminem train was really taking off. Royce is like, hell no. I'm, I'm not missing that again. <laughs> but definitely check that out, y'all. Build and destroy from Royce to 5'9". That joint went hard. So this is King Eric signing out. Catch me tonight on Screwball Radio with my boys Black Poet and Comet. Holla.